You listen to Back in the USSR here on 93.3 FM CFRU, and as you can gather from that intro, the alternative intro that Chad just gave, um, we're going to be talking, of course, about Hugo Chavez here tonight. Seeing that Hugo Chavez, the 14-year president, democratically elected president of Venezuela, who blazed a trail of 21st century socialism, has passed away just this past week. So tonight I'm back in the USSR. I'm going to pay tribute to him, to the man, to his movement, and his legacy. Because really this must be done. Because this, his impact cannot be underestimated. I mean, this is a man who instigated radical change not only in Venezuela itself, but in Latin America as a whole, and I would say the world. Because we have to remember, Hugo Chavez came to power in 1998 at a time when neoliberal economics and globalization was reaching a high point. You could say it reached a climax, you know, before the years of like 9 11 and the war on terror and all that sort of thing. This is at a time when capitalism was reigning. Just about unchallenged throughout the world. You know, of course, there were quite a few social movements and, uh, you know, around the world, you know, anti-globalization struggles, the Zapatista movement in Mexico and, and, and movements like this. But in terms of governments, virtually all the socialist governments that had existed during the Cold War had fallen by that point. You know, besides a few holdouts like Cuba, North Korea, and you could say Libya and Iraq and Syria, many of which had started to open the door to private investment and kind of giving in to the neoliberal tide to at least some degree. You know, like these, these holdouts that almost could be compared, I would say, to those very, very few States in Africa and Asia that managed to escape colonialism in the 19th century, European colonialism. You know, so we're in, and at that time, of course, we were talking about places like Ethiopia and Iran and Thailand, most notably, that managed to escape being colonized. And it was very, very hard at that time to escape colonization. You know, for a while, of course, Ethiopia was fighting for its life around that time. So, I mean, a lot of these countries, these socialist countries, in the 1990s, in the last decade of the 20th century, really were seen to be on their last leg. So socialism was seen to be on its way out. It was a failure. The Cold War was over. Capitalism had triumphed. Capitalism was reigning. You know, there was no challenge to the United States, serious challenge. This is the environment, the international environment, that Hugo Chavez came to power in, in 1998, when he was first elected president of Venezuela. And he even said that, you know, when he sat down to some of these European, uh, these uh, Latin American summits that he originally attended, basically the only socialists in the room were him and Fidel Castro. Even like joke to him, say, yeah, we're the only, you know, <laughs> it's like we're the only monsters in this room. You know what I mean? Like everybody else, you know, they're all these like neoliberal uh, capitalist worshipping presidents who are basically deregulating their economies and uh, obeying everything that Washington tells them to do economically, politically, socially, just basically as as Michael Perendi has, has said a number of times, it's his their economics basically could be be interpreted as basically saying, you know, come on in, boys, you know, to the you know saying to the uh, international corporations, it's all yours, you know, come in here and take whatever whatever you want, just take care of me, my brother Jose, and a few other people, and you know, you can have the land, labor, and resources of this country. It's all yours. It's the free market in the free world. And the only people who were saying no to that in Latin America. before Chavez came to power in Venezuela was, of course, Cuba. Which was, of course, isolated and under siege. But now, look at Latin America today, 14 years later. 
There is a reason why retired U.S. General Ramsey Clark went so far as saying Chavez's influence on Latin America will be seen by historians as more significant than Bolivar. Direct quote. That's Simon Bolivar, the liberator of Latin America from Spanish rule in the 1820s. That's pretty huge. <laughs> and you certainly wouldn't expect that coming from like a, a retired U.S. general, of all people. But of course, think about it. Chavez basically reignited socialism as a global political force. And he brought unprecedented unity to, unity to Latin America through organizations such as UNOSUR and uh, the other very various regional alliances, which impacted the Caribbean nations, as well as the Latin American nations as well. And these dramatically reduced U.S. influence in the region, while at the same time providing support to progressive political forces in Ecuador, Bolivia, and elsewhere in the region. It's like all of a sudden, you, in, you know, after decades of sometimes like, you know, atrocious dictatorial right-wing rule, you know, the perpetrated murderous atrocities in many countries, like whether that's in Guatemala or in Mexico or in Colombia or all these other places, or Venezuela itself, for that matter, all of a sudden you start to see leftist governments coming to power, just sweeping elections all across Latin America. That's what you start to see in the last 14 years. And Chavez was the first in that trend. He was the one who really kicked off that trend. And by providing support to leftist movements after he came to power, he really assisted in, say, Evo Morales coming to power in Bolivia, Rafael Correa coming to, coming to power in Ecuador, and various other governments throughout the, throughout the region being drawn in a more leftist direction more progressive direction in their politics. Whereas before they had only listened to Washington and basically towed the line on globalization and more or less uh, and neoliberal economics and global capitalism. So of course he inspired through his programs which empowered formerly poverty-stricken people. He inspired the, pro the masses of the people. Empowered them with direct democracy, social programs, economic betterment, free education, free medical care. He was also the first president of Venezuela, and, and as far as I know, in Latin America in general, to proudly proclaim his African and indigenous roots. You know, in a country where basically, the, in a, on a continent where the political class had basically, almost without exception, up to that point, been white and European descent. And, he, of course, he withstood a U.S.-backed coup in 2002 and, sh and, and just showed beyond a, a shadow of a doubt that a Latin American country can stand up to U.S. power. Because, because of course, Latin America has been facing up to U.S.-inspired coups for decades that have brought in, brought in you know, atrocious regime, regimes like Augusto Pinochet's regime in Chile. The result in the murder of thousands and thousands of people. So he won re-election again and again. Thus proving that leftist leaders, progressive leaders can win. That it can be done. And like I said before, this inspired many other leaders, many other movements in Latin America. Showing that it can be done. Progressive change is possible. He also provided support to progressive governments around the world. And inspired countless social movements around the world. See, his influence certainly was not limited to Latin America. He was supporting men, and this took an immense amount of courage. You even at a time when George W. Bush was talking about like the axis of evil and the need to go in and topple all these uh, governments around the world and, um, and use military force 
to project U.S. dominance and that sort of thing. He is going out and supporting Iraq. He's supporting Libya. He's supporting Iran. You know, all these countries around the world that were threatened by U.S. invasion and to a large extent still are. Like he was out there showing support to them. Forming joint projects with them. Like increasing trade with them. Huge amount of courage required for that. And of course he used his country's oil wealth to benefit the poor. As opposed to the wealthy elite who of course always monopolized control of the natural resources of the land, labor and resources of Venezuela. He changed all that. Now it's like the poor have access to that wealth. They are starting to benefit from the resources of their land, their nation, for the first time. And of course, that, that could be, that's like the equivalent of like uh, what happened in the Soviet Union and, and in Cuba and, and China and all these other places that went, underwent socialist revolutions in the 20th century. So the, common, the masses of the people could actually benefit from the resources of their, of their land for the first time. It wasn't just controlled by an exclusive clique of profiteering capitalists. Like for the first time, that wealth the people are actually getting access to that wealth and are benefiting from that wealth. And that, of course, is what happened in, in Venezuela through the programs that Chavez instigated in his 21st century socialism. So he also reorganized the Venezuelan military and security forces to ensure that the gains of the Bolivarian Revolution were secured. You created a two million strong militia of armed citizens to guard against any outside invasion. Which is a very astute move. Because of course, as he realized himself through the coup that was launched, launched against him in 2002, which of course the United States was uh, backed and immediately recognized the coup government. And, of course, for a long time has been issuing uh, threats and trying to meddle in the internal affairs of uh, Venezuela. He understands that the threat against the Bolivarian Revolution is very, very real. Which, of course, is something Simon Bolivar acknowledged himself in the 1820s. He was very, very worried that, ex- uh, that outside powers, imperialist powers, would intervene in Latin America. And, of course, they did. Because Latin America was not able to unify, you know, for really until the present day. You know, the United States, Britain, France, you name it, could pretty much intervene at will. You know, to take down governments, prop up governments, you name it. You instigate coups. You know, it's unbelievable the amount of foreign invasions that... uh, Latin America has endured since the since its independence from Spain in the 1820s. So he understood the ne- the need. Chavez understood the need to guard against foreign invasion. So overall, Chavez and his legacy are an example of how one man's example can shake the world. He's become a symbol for radical change. You know, much like a modern Fidel Castro or Che Guevara. His legacy is undeniable and cannot be undone. He has literally made a permanent mark on the political landscape of the world. He blazed a trail that other movements can follow and build upon. And he inspired a new generation of radicals worldwide. And perhaps most importantly of all, just as Simon Bolivar once dreamed of a united Latin America capable of defending itself against imperialism, Chavez took major steps. He had the same vision, and he took major steps to making that dream of a united Latin America a reality. Because we see increasingly now in Latin America, the United States is marginalized. It just doesn't have the cl- it has nowhere near the kind of clout that it used to have. Or just about whatever it said goes. You know, it could bully Latin American countries into fulfilling its will. That's not the case now. 
Latin America is unified as never before. There's major cooperation, political cooperation, economic cooperation. Latin America is a far more progressive place than it used to be. And really it is inching closer and closer towards Bolivar's dream of a united Latin America that could fight for its own independence. And it would be free from imperialist intervention. A united Latin America that would stretch all the way from Cape Horn all the way to Mexico. And that dream, that dream is very, very close to being fulfilled. I'd say it's within sight now. And that's what's changed. So we, should, we definitely should not underestimate Hugo Chavez and what he has done. Rumor de clarines, guerrero, ocurre el blindado, ocurre veloz, con celosos dragones de acero, que guardan la patria que el cielo nos dio, patria, patria, patria querida, tuyo es mi cielo, tuyo es mi sol, patria, Tuya es mi vida, tuya es mi alma, tuyo es mi amor.